Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Last week's host, Davis Grant, sacrificed two of his child brides to summon me here today. <laughs> The last time I was here, I met the Prince of Darkness himself, Ozzy Osbourne, so it's only downhill from here. <laughs> we can only hope that Brother Lucifer damns us with his presence today. Stevie Nicks, the head of my coven, has sent a carrier crow informing me of the first premonition. Two weeks ago, Lindsey Buckingham, the former guitarist for the band Fleetwood Mac, had to get an emergency heart operation. While the surgery, surgery was technically a success, Buckingham's vocal cords suffered damage because of the operation. This is really bad news for fans of Buckingham as he may not be able to sing his hit songs like Go Your Own Way and others. <laughs> While this news is tragic, hardly any of us should be surprised. Elton John had a throat surgery in the 80s that also permanently altered his vocal cords. How are these related, you ask? Aside from the fact that your parents' favorites are dying left and right, <laughs> there's a mad doctor on the loose. His goal? To destroy every classic rock icon's career. That's right. We here at Next Week Now are predicting that a doctor will eventually invite every major rock musician from before 1995 to undergo a surgery and then permanently alter their voice. Our prediction is quite simple. First, the man behind these surgeries is none other than legendary TV guy, Dr. Phil. <laughs> Dr. Phil will perform a checkup on every major music icon to make sure that they are in good health. Then. Phil will lie to all of them, saying their throats are in grave danger. Dr. Phil will then invite the rock icons to a live taping of his television show, Dr. Phil, where Dr. Phil will perform emergency throat surgery on all of them. The surgeries will be a success, <laughs> and Dr. Phil will be praised for the job well done. However, Dr. Phil's real goal will be to lower the vocal range of every rock icon, and he will succeed. He'll hit all the major rock idols, including Paul McCartney, Axl Rose, and even the Wiggles. <laughs> now, you may be wondering why Dr. Phil is doing this and what his endgame is. Well, Dr. Phil never wanted to be a doctor. He always wanted to go by Dr. Cocter and become a rock and sex icon. The problem was that his mustache kept brushing the microphone, so no one could understand what he was singing. This eventually made Dr. Phil resent the entire rock industry for never letting him accomplish his dreams. And now that he's a licensed doctor, he has the means to take his revenge on every rock icon that shunned him out of the industry. Once all the old rock and roll legends are out of the way, it's Dr. Phil's time to shine. He will release his debut album, Mustache Man Eating You Out, <laughs> which will reach number one on all of the charts. He will then embark on his world tour, Phil's Upper Lip Mania, and become the highest grossing artist of this decade. As for the old artists who can't sing anymore, They'll start a daytime talk show together and gain a lot of middle-aged mom fans. This next prediction has to do with the many soulless devil agents that roam the streets of Los Angeles after they've signed their souls to my father, Beelzebub, promising an eternity of damnation in exchange for a couple of grams of blow. The Oscars are upon us in just a couple days' time. The event of the season for beautiful, successful millionaires and neckbeard film bros alike. As celebrities prowl the red carpets with their waxy, artificial plastic surgery faces and smile for the bright lights in the cameras, something deeper lurks beneath the surface. Something a little more sinister. We hear it next week now. Well, I hear it next week now have some contacts from a special little organization which will remain anonymous. These contacts have informed me of an underground plot to destabilize the social order and spark an uprising among the many disenfranchised citizens of the United States. That's right, the Oscars are simply a ploy 
to get all of the richest people in America in one room and then systematically slaughter each and every one of those bitches. <laughs> How will this happen? Here's a step by step. First, there will be lots of pictures. Lots and lots of pictures, all of them, wearing dazzling suits and dresses that are worth four years of college tuition. None of them with a clue that those beautiful clothes, they will, will be the last outfits they ever wear. Everyone will file into the awards room, smiling, chatting, laughing, completely unaware. Suddenly, the doors will all slam shut and lock. The lights will go dark, screams, confusion, a little bit of pee. <laughs> and then a single spotlight will illuminate the stage. And on stage, there will be iced tea <laughs> with a chainsaw. <laughs> iced tea will shout, book em, boys. <laughs> And masked figures who also have chainsaws <laughs> will leap from the balconies into the sea of rich, spoiled brats. Christian Bale will be the first one beheaded, splattering each and every camera with his red, red blood. <laughs> Through a layer of red, the audience will be able to see the entire chainsaw fight occur. As the chainsaw fight is happening, a demon skeleton from hell will appear on stage in a puff of smoke, surrounded by his demon skeleton band. They will begin to play heavy doom metal while Ice-T escapes out the back door. This will summon Nicolas Cage, who is coincidentally wearing a red and black flannel shirt and holding an enormous bottle of vodka in his hand. He will join the chainsaw frenzy, smashing people over the head with his bottle of vodka and crying. <laughs> Any resemblance of this violent attack to a 2018 thriller slash mystery movie is purely coincidence. <laughs> it is simply what my contacts have informed me will happen at the Oscars. <laughs> so buckle in tightly, because this weekend is sure to be one hell of a time for film buffs. As we finally near the end of our days, scourges and diseases of all sorts have slowly begun to take hold of our society. Delicious measles, savory strains of influenza, and a dash of flesh-eating bacteria to top it all off. When the dead and diseased die off, the sisters and I dine. The crows tell me there's a new disease invading college campuses and cities across the nation and former abandoned infant and next week now correspondent Keegan Zipper <laughs> has the story.